you made off with something called the Earth Savior. Of This mission is going to require discretion on a number of fronts. That information is classified, so even what I do know, I can't divulge. Now, I realize as part of this mission, you'll probably end up finding out anyway, but that's besides the point. For the sake of your cover, it's best you work with whatever information the fleet gives you. Excellent. Let me have it, and I'll upload it to our database. Are you kidding me? Dombrowski was already making a six-figure salary, and yet he couldn't resist starting an embezzlement scheme. It makes me sick. Ah, oh, it's gonna be an absolute pleasure to throw his butt in prison. That it? Okay, fine, fine. I know there's more out there, so keep on it. I'll be here if you have any more questions. Captain, greetings. Need something? All right, Jazz, what do you got? According to the latest, the comm spike is being developed at UC Star Station SY920. Location undisclosed. Fantastic. So how do we disclose it? We could lean on your smuggling contact. Call in that favor. You know who I mean. Our friend on Jim's. Nice one, Jazz. I'll make the arrangements. All right, Rook. Next stop, New Atlantis. Your connection is Juan Dayu. She's got most of the premium UC smuggling routes locked down tight. If you don't piss her off, she should be able to sneak you past SY920's security. Just remember to count your fingers after you shake hands with her. Hmm, sounds like a situation that calls for a fist bump. Unless she wants my knuckles, too. You're in the fleet. You should always expect trouble. As far as Juan goes, even though she's one of our newer contacts, you shouldn't have any problems dealing with her. Definitely. We're talking cargo depots, star yards, research stations, and like in SY920's case, military outposts. I've never seen someone new to the game have so many contacts. It's the reason we let her join up in the first place. I don't know how she accomplished that. We've been trying to crack some of those places for years. I sure hope so. But she might be our only crack at finding a decent decryption device. Once Juan gets you past the guard dogs, it's gonna be on you to locate the comm spike. According to the data we have, it's in the prototype phase, meaning there should only be a single device aboard the station. 
Basically, you break it, you bought it. We paid good money for the information, so I'm sure it works. And if it doesn't, a certain source at Mast is gonna have to deal with a very pissed off Neva, and that would be the end of that. You just bring the tech here, I'll do the rest. Oh, and one more thing. SY920 is a UC military installation. That means it's guarded by heavily armed troops, and we both know those idiots don't mess around. If you intend to turn the place into a shooting gallery, you might want to be sure you're hauling an arsenal, because you're gonna need it. She's got the clout to get you in the front door. You're gonna think you're part of a regular supply delivery. Beyond that, you and Juan are gonna have to put your heads together and come up with a plan. Are you kidding? The UC's already painted giant red crosshairs on our backs. Keyway and his pals at Sysdef won't rest until we're dead. It's not like you can make them any angrier at us, right? Shoot the place full of holes if you want. Just bring back that calm spike. Perfect. That's what I like to hear. Okay, so I'm gonna arrange a meeting with Juan at Kay's place in the well. In the meantime, I'll make sure Jazz comes up with a solution to the electromagnetic atmosphere problem at Bannock 4. Oh, okay, you'll make sure. More like get drunk while Jazz does all the hard work. Typical. Privileges of rank, my darling. We'll discuss it a little later. And you, get the hell out of here. And don't come back without that calm spike in your cargo bay. I'm gonna leave that up to you, Rook. If you get into deep trouble and you think bringing her into the fold is gonna make the difference, tell her whatever you want. At some point, Delgado's gonna be promising everyone their cut of Crix's legacy. If we want him to stick with the fleet, it's inevitable, but until the money's within reach, the less people that know, the better. The Crimson Fleet made contact with her about a year ago. We were searching for a smuggling connection in UC space, and her name kept popping up repeatedly, so I decided to put her to the test. Not only did she pass, but the results were off the charts. Made us both a ton of credits, that was good enough for me. Beyond that, I don't know much about her. But hey, as long as she keeps my gal bank account humming, she can keep all the secrets she wants. Good luck. You've got stuff to smuggle, I've got the stuff to hide it. All business and no fun. And I need your cash. It's a match made in heaven. to upgrade that ship of yours? Assuming the technology works? It's a skeleton key for signal encryption. 
If what they say is true, ratchet encryption, signal protocol, frequency shuffling, even quantum state keys can be hacked. Now, I doubt it does all that, but it should be enough to crack the CBR-27 transponder that Galbank installed on the legacy. Neva's mine, so don't be getting any ideas. She may be a little rough around the edges, but she's just looking out for her own. There's no one better to have your back. You mean way back then? Before the tech was available to create something like the comm spike? That's a good question. I suppose he might have been able to acquire the actual transponder cipher from someone within Galbank. Unfortunately for us, I'd bet a bottle of Bog's finest that those records are buried somewhere out of our reach. <laughs> Truth is, the fleet rescued me. Of course, I wouldn't have needed rescuing if they hadn't blown up the ship I was working on. Delgado plucked me out of space and brought me to the key. I took one look at the place and was compelled to work. Soon after, he offered me a permanent spot with the fleet. I don't mind help. Oh.
to underscore the impressive architecture of New Atlantis, right? I've been here hundreds of times, and it never ceases to amaze me. Sure hope your day's going as well as mine is. That is convenient. But riding right after eating can give you stomach aches. Your neighbor's new recruit? Ah, you must not be used to pirates being so cordial. But in the heart of New Atlantis, we have to do our best to keep up appearances. I can't afford to be as rough as some of our cohorts. It's bad for business. Careful, the walls have ears. SY 920 is one of my regular stops, so I already have the necessary approvals. Neva says you're after a piece of UC tech. So to get it, we're going to need to get you on board. I can do that, but I have conditions. Huh. Neva warned me you were difficult. Clearly I didn't understand what she meant, but I do now. If I can be candid, for this job to work, we'll have to do this my way. We take my ship, and you're a member of my crew. 
But make no mistake, once you board, the risk is entirely yours. This route is highly lucrative, and sacrificing it is not an option. Sounds like just another day in the office. We really should upgrade our safety standards. Being able to adapt under pressure should serve you well. In any case, when you're ready, meet me at my ship. It's the Jade Swan. And make sure you're prepared for the long haul. Once you're on board SY920, you can't come and go as you please. Enough to be on a first-name basis with the Marines working the comms. It also helps they want us to dock. The cargo ship means supplies, special requests, slates from home. In the void of space, a cargo hauler is a soldier's best friend. I'd like to, but I need to keep a low profile. In my experience, the more people know about you, the more they have over you. Famous last words. But you do this job right, and who knows what the future holds. Anyways, I appreciate the small talk. Elgato's crew aren't usually so chatty. But let's keep our focus on the mission. We can swap bar stories and share scars when we've got enough creds to buy the bar and fix the scars. Only what I've been told. Get you on the SY920, get you out if I can. That being said, I can be a better guide if I know what it is we're after. So it's up to you. Interesting. When we get to the station, I'll see if I can pull any information on its whereabouts. Hopefully that'll make for a smoother trip. Less than you. And even if I did, I'm a smuggler, not a scientist. But if Delgado's after it, then I have a feeling there's a pile of credits waiting at the end of this job. So we better do it right. We'll talk more on the ship. Howdy. Yes, what? Pardon. All right, a few things to know. When we get to the checkpoint, UC military will be hailing us. Let me do the talking. Pretend you're a piece of cargo if you have to. Say nothing and let their minds fill in the gaps. 
a crate of cargo can still have personality, though, if you add enough flair. Let's try to keep our bags colorless and boring, then. Now, like I said before, once we take off, there's no turning back until this job is done. If you need to take care of anything before we leave, do it. If you want to ask me any other questions, go for it. All right, then get comfortable. We leave for SY920 immediately. All crew prepare for takeoff. Routing power to engine and grab drive. All systems go. I've spent half my life walking and chewing gum at the same time. I can handle a little banter. Sounds like you're putting in a request for double duty. Captain, I retract my earlier statement. For the record, I don't even like gum. <laughs> Noted. Just get us there safe. Roger that. First things first, the station is enormous, with checkpoints everywhere. To get past them, you'll need a military uniform. And to get a uniform, you'll need to get to the barracks. There should be a way through the vents. You can get to them via the maintenance door downstairs. There's an intercom there as well, where we can make contact. Once you get a uniform, it should be fairly easy to find an elevator to the command bay. But, if at any point your cover's blown, I'm gone. Provided you haven't sounded the alarm, then yeah, like I said, if you can find an intercom, I'll keep a channel open. This is a star station, so there are plenty of ventilation ducts you can slither into. As far as tactics go, it's an oldie, but goodie. Only military personnel are allowed out of the cargo area. That's why we need to get you to the barracks to find you a uniform. Very funny. But if you do get into trouble, try and use that quick wit to your advantage. Either way, for now, get on that station and find that intercom. We'll talk more then. Hello? With the Jade Swan, loading and unloading only. Stay clear of the military barracks. Cargo haulers are restricted to the cargo bay. Oh, am 
my elbow's killing me, and this brace is itchy. Sure, I've got a minute. Mm hmm. at all.
Captain Huang Dai Yu. Good. And no alarms or warnings on the comms. Music to my ears. If you found a uniform, be sure to put it on. That'll provide some cover. I've hacked into the database, and it seems information on the comm spike is in the archives. There's a checkpoint you'll have to pass, which requires a clearance code. A disguise should work, and it's all so fun. It's like role-playing with higher stakes. <laughs> Just don't get too carried away. You're pirates, not actors. And don't forget, you'll still need the code. Try the security office. They likely have a computer there that has what you need. Going dark for now. We'll talk again once you've located the comm spike. You know what you're doing with these systems. You lost, Ensign? Need your clearance code, Marine. All right, Ensign, let's hear it. Sorry, Ensign. Code doesn't match. Need your clearance code, Marine. All right, Ensign, let's hear it. Your clearance, Nakasaka. I assume the two of you are together? Of course. I go where they go. Then you're both clear. Commander Natara, test flights for the latest prototypes are ready to go.
has put in a request for more personnel. It seems there was an accident. Ugh. It's always something with that doctor. Not to change the subject, but are we concerned about potential leaks? No. Until you can provide more substantial proof, we'll simply monitor the situation at the cargo bay. For now, I've recommended to Dr. Vogel to contact me immediately. Correlation models results in risk increased by a magnitude of uh, two. But we won't tell Commander Natar. Wait, who are you? Why are you in here? Did you not see the sign? The calm spike. But I can't just hand it to you. It's a module for a ship. It's attached to a prototype in one of our docking ports. We're still in the testing phase, running decryptions across a variety of signal types, but the results so far have been very promising. It can even interpolate signal data lost in the retrieval. It really is a wondrous technology. Yes. It's not quite cracking the Enigma code, but it will give us a significant tactical advantage. We'll be able to infer everything from battle plans to meal consumption. Not that we'd care about that sort of thing, outside of the effects of diet on combat readiness. And yes, there are certain kinks to be worked out, missing parts, and the occasional traumatic injury here and there, but it's all part of the adventure. Oh, it's ready. We're long past the inference stage. Statistical models can only go so far. And now that we've corrected the prior mishaps, it's time for real flesh and blood pilots to stress test the systems. The kind unafraid to make the necessary sacrifices. In short, I've requested a full squadron of these brave and fearless Marines to be transferred to the station. They'll give the prototype a final run, and provided there are minimal casualties, 
we can present our findings to Mast. Splendid. That was fast. I thought I put in the request this morning. Normally my requests aren't given this much attention, let alone haste. It seems a tad suspicious. Ah, yes. The wheels of bureaucracy tend to have corners. Maybe it's not the worst thing in the world if we cut them. Classified, I I'm the head of the Com Spike project. I would have gotten word of this ahead of time. We are in need of more tests to reach Beta. And not horses, though. Actual human test pilots. All right, you've convinced me. You're the test pilot. You'll need a uniform and a terminal password to authorize a flight and get past Natara's cumbersome checkpoints. The uniform you can get in the locker room area, the password you get from me. You'll find the prototype ship at docking bay 8. Use the password to access the flight terminals in the control center. And of course, best of luck. You are doing science a great service by undertaking this sacrifice. for duty, pilot? Access granted. Be sure to head to the control center and schedule the flight. And good luck. Everything looks clear. were different under Commander Woods. I hope that's how I stick this time. Things have gotten real tight since Commander Woods. took over for Commander Woods. A lot of soldiers don't like it. Things were a little too loose under Commander Woods.
Prototype ship, you are cleared for takeoff. We'll begin the test on your departure. Recording test flight data. Please adhere to the scheduled flight plan and let us know if you have any issues. Well, well, well. Welcome back, Rook. Looks like you got a new toy for me. Go on in and give everyone the lowdown. We'll take care of things from here. Greetings, Captain. Are you looking to start something? This is the Crimson Fleet's headquarters. It's just so unlike them. Need something? I used to work for a megacorp. Or a monkey suit. Shopping for pirated goods is a catch-22. Half the price, twice the guilt. All right, make it quick. I've got schematics to organize. Now you buy from me, you can tactical gear. Stay safe out there. Rook. Talk to me. Let me carry that. That's all I have, too.
Nice to know Neva was right about you. It's good to have a promising rookie with the fleet. Surprise? Neva talks tough, and frankly, she is tough. But she's not a machine. I won't deny I helped. Let's hope the compensation reflects that, huh? Anyway, I believe I owe you a drink. It's the last time I'm paying, of course. Because if Dalgado's right about Crix's legacy, you've earned more than your fair share already with that comm spike. Yeah, and I had to feign my surprise to make sure I didn't rat you out. But thanks for trusting me with that info all the same. Us rooks have to stick together. Sounds like you're on board as a true believer. I have to admit, the way things are going, I'm starting to believe myself. Looks like everyone's starting to buy in. Well, steal it. Pirates don't actually buy anything. Anyway, I've kept you long enough. Now that you've had your drink and my debt is paid, it's time for you to give Delgado the good news. Every captain here is under stripes. We just have to blend in, disappear, act like we belong. If you want to pad that account of yours... Jasmine tells me that you not only brought us the comm spike, but an entire prototype UC ship. I'm impressed, Rook. Very impressed. Yeah, yeah, nice try, Rook. We know you didn't have a choice. Juan gave us the full rundown of your little smash and grab operation. She gave you some really high praise. Said you were a pro. And from what I hear, receiving praise from Juan Dayu is quite an accomplishment. All in all, a job well done. Now, on to the business at hand. Jasmine, are you there? Yep, I'm here, boss. What's up? How's it going? I already have two of my crew tearing the ship apart from one end to the other. Comm spike shouldn't be too tough to extract. I'm looking forward to seeing what those UC techs have been up to. Keep me posted. All right, that leaves our electromagnetic atmosphere problem. And I think we've discovered a solution. There's a corporation in the city of Neon called Jennerdyne. They're responsible for the massive conduction grid that powers the city. We get our hands on their electrical absorption tech, and Jasmine swears she can tame it to handle Bannock 4. It's the giant shroud that covers the entire city. Big, ugly thing that Jennerdyne uses to absorb lightning strikes. When you arrive in Neon, I'm sure your contact will fill you in with all the boring details. You're damn right she can. My girl can piece together a jump engine with her eyes shut. Literally, I've seen her do it. Lost good money on that bet. All right, let's not get carried away, Neva. Now, why don't you give us the info on our Neon contact? You get to meet up with the lovely Estelle Vincent. She's had her deft little fingers on the pulse of Neon for some time now. Whatever info you need, I guarantee she can get. Estelle is one of the most reliable captains we have in the fleet. If I want something done, there's none of the typical bullshit. It gets done, and afterward, we all split the cash. No, no, no. 
There is no getting along here. You are going to do everything she asks. Follow her instructions to the letter. She is valuable to the fleet. You piss her off and we lose her as a contact, you're going to be answering to me. Technically, we already answer to you, but point taken. And if you fail me here, you will not like the answers I give. Estelle will be waiting at Madame Savage's place. I'd say don't keep her waiting, but chances are she won't mind. Girl loves her liquor. And keep your eyes on the price. Neon's one big distraction for people like us, so I want you focused. We are one step away from Quix's legacy, and we cannot afford any screw-ups. I have something for you. Hail acknowledged. You're clear to dock at docking port one. The commander will be waiting for you in operations. Seems you had quite the eventful mission on your hands. You still have the Crimson Fleet's trust, and you were able to spare lives in the process. As you probably guessed, not very well. Keeping Mast out of the loop regarding this particular mission has proven exceptionally difficult. But we've managed to keep your involvement in the dark. Sparing the lives of the soldiers on SY-920 has definitely made our position with the top brass much easier. And on behalf of the United Colonies and Commander Natara, I thank you. No thanks needed. We're just doing what anybody would do. Excuse me, sir. I hate to interrupt, but there's still the matter of the comm spike to discuss. Yes, of course, Lieutenant. Time is short, and we should get to the matter at hand. Please give me your report. With the acquisition of the comm spike, the fleet is one step closer to Crix's legacy. And the more people we arrest, the greater the chance that your infiltration is discovered. We're working against the clock here, so let's start by discussing the status of the comm spike. That all depends on what you brought back from your mission. Aside from your eyewitness testimony, I assume you have the usual evidence that could lead to her incarceration? I can take it off your hands once we complete your debriefing, but at the moment, I'm far more concerned about the comm spike. Then it's just a matter of time before she reverse engineers it to fit the fleet's purposes. So what does Delgado have you doing next? Has he solved the Bannock 4 problem? The conduction grid? That's... brilliant. But is it actually possible? It's 80-year-old tech. Sorry, sir. The conduction grid is how Neon generates its power. It essentially absorbs lightning strikes and converts it to usable energy. It would take a hell of an engineer to modify the technology to handle Bannock 4's EM field. An engineer, like Jasmine Durand. That's the case. Inform our contacts on Neon that our operative will be touching down there in the near future. Absolutely, sir. And before you depart, I wanted you to know that your efforts are helping us gain interest among my superiors. They're finally beginning to believe that we can take down the Crimson Fleet and make amends for the UC's embarrassing mistake. 
The fact that our common enemy owes its existence to the United Colonies, of course. It was the riot at the lock touched off by Jasper Creeks that inspired him to create the Crimson Fleet in the first place. Thanks to your assistance, we'll be able to rectify that mistake, and MAST will authorize an all-out assault. Of course I am, but it's a calculated risk. It's long overdue. All right, I suppose that's all for now. I'll be looking forward to your next report. Good luck. And please, be careful. It's good to have you back. What can I do for you? We'll be here if you need us. Early reports say your mission on the Siren was a success. I'm sure the commander is pleased.